Hello and welcome to The Morning Show. We're coming to you live from Kuala Tringanu in Malaysia for the eighth and final event on the 2011 World Match Racing Tour. I'm Hannah White and once again I'm going to be coming to you live three times a day with this show in the morning, our two-hour live sailing window in the afternoon and then of course wrapping up the day's event with the Today Show later on. So it has been a great year so far. As I said, this is the eighth and final event so as they say here at the Monsoon Cup, this week a cram champion will be crowned. So let's have a look at the leaderboard so far and see how things are looking. So in the top spot right now, it is Ian Williams of Great Britain and Team GAC Pindar with 106 points. In second place, it's Francesco of Bruni of Italy and Bruni Racing with 100 points. In third place, it's the Australian Torvar Mursky and the Wave Muscat with 99.8 points. In fourth place, the other Australian Peter Gilmore and Yanmar Racing with 78.8 points. In fifth place, the Swedish sailor Bjorn Hansen and the Mechanoman Sailing Team with 75 points. In sixth place, our first French entry, Damien Yell of Fran French Match Racing with 74 points. In seventh place, our second Swedish team, Johnny Bernson and the Bernson Sailing Team with 73.2 points. In eighth place, it's Jesper Radic, the Danish sailor, Adrian Lee and partners with 71.2 points. In ninth place, Mathieu Richard, also from France, and the French match racing team, 69.6 points. And in tenth place, it is Phil Robertson from New Zealand with Waka Racing Team with 56 points points so we're here in Tringanu this is it somebody this week will hold up one of two trophies that are up for grabs first of all we do have the very prestigious monsoon cup which is right behind me and of course the world championship trophy the brand new trophy designed and presented here by Garrard now the monsoon cup is absolutely notorious for being the finale of the world match racing tour and it was no different yesterday we, when we had our opening ceremony and I was there to witness the spectacle. Welcome to the Monsoon Cup, the eighth and final event on the 2011 World Match Racing Tour. As you can see, we are here at the official opening ceremony we, where we have VIPs, dignitaries and the sports minister from all over Malaysia coming here for this very special event. This is the Monsoon Cup and this week we will see a champion crowned. Behind me, the 12 skippers that will be taking part here at the Monsoon Cup are being introduced to the general public here, the sports minister and other dignitaries. Of course, all 12 of them will be battling it out to win the Monsoon Cup, but only a handful of them are in with a chance of winning the overall world title. This is the Monsoon Cup of 2011! So with the formalities drawing to a close here at the opening ceremony of the Monsoon Cup, there's only one thing left to do and that is for our 12 teams to get out on the water tomorrow and start battling it out for the Monsoon Cup here in Kuala Tringano but also for the all-important 2011 World Match Racing Championship Trophy. And one man that's responsible for making this the spectacle it is, is joining me now. I'm delighted to say Shafiq Iqbal, the Senior Operations Manager for T-Best, who are the company responsible for organising the Monsoon Cup. Shafiq, here we are once again. Yes. Must be delighted that, you know, here we are. November's come around again and it's the Monsoon Cup. Yes, it's uh, the Monsoon Cup again. It's where the World Championship will be, will be decided. <coughs> We're looking forward to a tight race this year. As you can see, the conditions today are just absolutely fantastic. No, it's, uh, we've never had these strong winds here in Tringana before. Tringana's always been famous for light winds, but looking out there today, the winds are not light at all. Now, as a British girl, you think I'd be used to the rain by now, but, I mean, this is quite something. We've had some very, very heavy rainfall. How does that affect you guys organising an event like this? Well, we've been, this is our seventh year now, and every year we are prepared for the worst. Some years we get away with um, no damage, but as you've seen this year, I mean, before the opening ceremony, we had 40 knots of wind come in tear half the event side apart and we're prepared for it so we got it all back and running again in two hours again this morning the winds are just absolutely ridiculous so but we're prepared for it we've been used to this so uh, yeah it's uh, it's constantly fighting fires every every part of the day so yep hopefully the event will go on well and um, keep our fingers crossed 
Now, I heard rumours of a vast number of people coming down to watch the racing at the weekend, that you're expecting something like 100,000 people. What, what have you got planned for those people that are coming down? Well, um, last year we hit about 170,000 people. This year we're looking to hopefully maintain that number. What we have in store for the people is, of course, the fantastic racing here in the Duyong Basin, as well as plenty of side events for the whole family. I mean, you come, it becomes a family day out, as we've got um, uh, a little children's program. It's called Carnival Upen Ipen. Upen Ipen are two cartoon characters here, which have a massive following in Malaysia. They're having a carnival here, a mock-up of their little kampong house, which is a village house, and um, they'll be a hit with the kids. So the kids come, parents come, parents can watch the sailing, kids have their own activities. And on top of that, we have a whole host of stuff, other stuff, uh, local games, um, some uh, local foods, a um, lot of things for the whole family. It'll be an interesting weekend. And one thing that amazed me is how much, you know, Tringano really kind of embraces this event. Everywhere you go in this town, there are billboards with sailors' pictures on them. They really are celebrities. We've had the paparazzi out here in force. I mean, it's a great, great event. Yes, it is. I mean, as you know, Malaysia has always had a very um, uh, strong maritime heritage, which has, I would say has been lost over the last 20 or 30 years. With the Monsoon Cup, it's reigniting that passion for, 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 for the sea. And a lot of people look up to these sailors as uh, modern-day gladiators on the water. As we had uh, our legendary Hang Tua and Hang Jabat, those were our legendary sailors and warriors back then. So these are the modern-day people, and we've got our local sailors looking up to these people as icons and wanting to emulate what they've done out there in the water. And um, that is very... Um, it's shown in our local sailors how the local sailors have come up a level since 2006. And um, with Jeremy Koo in the Monsoon Cup this year, I mean, he did fantastic, was great um, action in the Malaysian Championships, and he's gotten the ticket into the Monsoon Cup, and um, I'm sure the local crowds will be all get behind him, hoping for him to do good in this event. Well, we're going to be catching up with a couple of those gladiators who will be battling it out to become world champions later on in the show. But yesterday, I caught up with one of the tacticians here at the event, racing with Peter Gilmore from Yanmar Racing. Simon Shaw told me a little bit about the conditions that we can expect here out on the race course. Now, I'm here with Simon Shaw, tactician from the Yanmar Racing Team. Now, Simon, this is the sixth consecutive time that you've done the Monsoon Cup. I believe you've been here every year since 2006, which makes you highly qualified to tell us about the venue. Now, we're here. We can see the race course behind us. Just tell us a little bit about what, you know, what goes on out there. Well, I think the first thing to say is when anyone does an interview like this, they always say how challenging the race area is. And here in Terengganu, in the, the Monsoon Cup, it genuinely is very very challenging and I think that's the the first feature every day is different and um, we have two main current lines one coming down the main river from Tringanu town uh, which is just off behind you and uh, the smaller river which is off just out of camera uh, where there's a much smaller narrower flow of current and those two currents just flow up either side of the bay and the race course is between them and so quite often you'll come off the start line and very early in the race you have to decide whether you're going to back the left current or whether you're going to back the right current um, and, and and bang a corner all the way into the top uh, that combines with the wind coming in off the off the bay which is very confused and and very mixed and the impact we've, we're lucky enough here to have a two seven or eight story massive sailing grandstand buildings which is great for the spectators but when the wind's blowing off them, that makes for very, very tricky wind conditions as well as, as we race up the course and try and get underneath the buildings. So. so there's not one particular side. We've seen many, many venues where we go to San Maritz and it's all about the left or things like that. Here it's very different. Well, there are days when it will be all about the right and you absolutely have to win the right. But the next day they may close the, the floodgates a little bit upstream on that river and open the ones on the other side and in exactly the same conditions, at exactly the same state of the tide, uh, you've got to go the other way. So there are no hard and fast rules and it's just about looking at the surface of the water, trying to figure out where the current's flowing at what time. Uh, there are two or three high tides sometimes in the tide cycle here which makes the, the, the currents flowing one minute, one hour, then it's not, then it's flowing again and I tell you it catches some of the best sailors in the world out and you know we've been on the wrong side of it many times now it's called the monsoon cup and that's for you know a very very good reason and right now is sort of the first time all day when it hasn't been raining how how difficult does it make sailing for you guys when it's absolutely torrential downpour well i, I mean i like to think coming from england we're, we're slightly accustomed to the rain but 
it is difficult. I mean, once you get in the zone and you're actually racing, you just completely blank it from your mind and it, it, you don't even notice. Um, but I think it, it, it just makes your longevity in the day that bit harder. Uh, that you get wet and after four or five or six races and particularly if it's not working out for you after a while you do just have a hang on a minute I, I'm not really enjoying this very much kind of moment and they're the things you have to, to fight for and manage you know with, with that side of the weather. And as a tactician what would you say was the main thing you were looking for when you go out on the water and Peter says to you right Simon this is it are we going left or right what is it that you're looking for? I think we're, as I said, looking for the, the flow of the water, just trying to pick out where those current lines are and how that interfaces with the wind. You know, we're looking at the surface of the water, trying to figure out whether there's a slightly darker breeze on the right of us or on the left of us and just looking at that and going right and just trying to pick away, up managing the current, managing the wind, up the way up the beat that we think is going to be the most advantage. Well, there's only one way to find out whether you're right or not and that is on the race course tomorrow. Simon, thank you very much. No problem. Well, with the Yamaha Racing in fourth place at the moment, they'll be very, very keen to have a good performance here and try and get that all-important spot on the podium. But two guys who have got their work cut out this week are joining me now. Torval Mursky from the Wave Muscat Mursky Racing Team and Francesco Bruni from Bruni Racing here. Now, you guys sitting in second and third place, respectively. Torval, I'm going to come to you for first. We've just been looking at the results. You're in third place at the moment, just... 0.2 of a point behind Francesco Bruni but your aim is not Francesco this week your aim surely must be Ian Williams and taking him off the top spot well our aim actually is just to you know to go out there and do the best we can and we know that we are capable of winning the Monsoon Cup and uh, ultimately that would mean the world title as well so you know we're, we're extremely focused this week and we're just trying to uh, sail as well as we can the, tri the conditions are tricky here and all the teams are uh, you know, on top form. There's been a lot of practice going on, a lot of preparation for this event by all the teams and uh, it's going to be one hell of an event. That's all right. I've been quite nice to you all year, but really and truly, I mean, you really want that world title. You want to win the Monsoon Cup and Ian is looking strong. He's had a good, you know, a good few events, but you've come off the back of, of you know, two wins, both in Bermuda and in San Moritz. Surely you're out there to take him down, aren't you? Well, I don't think there was ever a case where we ever didn't want to win a regatta. So we want this one just like we want every other one. And obviously this is the, the, the final event and this is one where someone gets crowned. So we've got to want it, you know, as much as anything else. And uh, we, we're, we're going to be fighting for it. For it. I'm desperately trying to get some dirt from you, but you just won't do it. Maybe <laughs> Francesco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, oh, Francesco, sitting in second, you've had a, a really mixed year. You know, you started off at cracking pace. We then saw a real slump of form, not making it through qualifying on a couple of events. You're here. How are you feeling? I feel great. I feel uh, um, lucky that uh, I have the opportunity to uh, fight for the title. Um, that was our goal right from the beginning of the year, being on the podium and uh, having a chance uh, at the last event. And uh, here we are with uh, that chance and we have, and we have to use it well. Uh, we, it doesn't uh, uh, come every day, um, so we, need, we really need to give 100%, sell our best, uh, as Torvar said, and uh, uh, try to win the event. That's all it matters. I mean, it's an unusual situation because you two are rivals. There's no question you're in second and third, sort of, respectively. But is there any way you can work together and, and, and try and take Ian out early on? Well, in, not, not in this match race uh, stuff. Like, there is no... You cannot partnership with with another team uh, I would love to <laughs> but uh, if honestly I have to have to say uh, uh, I mean uh, we want we want to win uh, but uh, we we feel like uh, that uh, a any team deserve to win uh, honestly we a every team had is up and downs during the season and hopefully will be our moment up here and uh, a little bit of, of a down moment for Torvar and uh, Ian. Now, we have seen you, as I said earlier, you had a couple of bad events. You then went to Bermuda. You were pleased with, uh, with your result yes. in Bermuda. And you're coming here. Are you, are you feeling positive? You know, you, you have said before that you've been a, had a very busy season and you've come into this event tired. You know, are you feeling well rested? Yes, this time, yes. Um, we, we had a really tough moment uh, in the middle of the season where uh, we were racing all sorts of boats and, 
uh, we were really we re really tired not just me all, all the crew and um, we knew that uh, Bermuda was going to be a big turning point uh, uh, and we we needed a good result there to be uh, in the position to win the title here and we did it and we are glad that we went there which was not planned in the beginning and uh, now we have a chance okay and Silva I'm going to come back to you very quickly now are you just taking this as any other event obviously there's a huge amount of pressure on both of your shoulders but are you just coming into this this is the monsoon cup and I'm here to win it the monsoon cup and with that comes the world title well, I mean, we, we just have to really break it down as sailors and just remember how we win and, and those steps. So, you know, you've got to focus on, you know, when you start, you've got to sail the right direction. The crew's got to make this manoeuvre and that. And, you know, whether we want to win or not, um, the whole regatta doesn't affect the decision on how we race a single race or make a single decision. So we're just focusing on what we can control and uh, hopefully we're prepared and, and do it as well as we can. Okay, well, we've seen the conditions here. Right now, I'm looking out of the window and it is absolutely pouring with rain. So the Monsoon Cup already living up to its expectations. These guys will be heading out in the water in the second qualifying session this afternoon. So best of luck to both of you. And thank you very much for joining me. You can, of course, join all the action here live from the Monsoon Cup. I'll be back with Mark Chisnell and the rest of the team this afternoon from three o'clock local time for two hours. And then, of course, I'll be back this evening with the Today Show. You can follow us on Twitter. We're at World. MRT or on Facebook just type in World Match Racing Tour into the Facebook search bar and you will find us and of course online at WMRT.com so there's no excuse for you not catching all of the action here with myself and the rest of the team thanks for joining us